The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming, A Christmas Story. <laughs> this story ends in someone's mouth, but it begins in a tiny village more or less covered in snow. The snow had fallen during the long night, during which children had pressed their faces to the windows, looking for a glimpse of a man who they suspected of bringing them wonderful gifts. But instead, they heard a terrible noise from a certain cottage in the neighboring arrondissement, a word which here means a place where something was being born. This cottage was already regarded with some suspicion, as it was the only place not decorated with flashing colored lights at this time of year. The thing that was being born was alatka, a word which here means the potato pancake. Latkas are a traditional part of the celebration of Hanukkah, a holiday commemorating a miraculous Jewish military victory. Nearly everything in this world is born screaming, and the latka was no exception. Even though the latka wasn't conceived and born the way you and I were conceived and born, but instead fashioned from grated potatoes, chopped onion, beaten eggs, and a dash or two of salt. Once the ingredients were properly mixed, the latka was slapped into a pan full of olive oil, heated to a very high temperature. And this is when it began to scream. Ah! The latka was suffering so much that he leapt out of the hot pan and out the window of the cottage and began to run screaming down the boulevard. Ah! This may seem like unusual behavior for a potato pancake, but this is a Christmas story in which things tend to happen that would never occur in real life. The Laka ran past a row of flashing colored lights which hung from the rain gutters of less suspicious cottages. What's all the ruckus? The lights said in unison. We are the ones who are supposed to be dominating the neighborhood with our cheerful glow. I was just thrown into a pan of boiling oil, the Laka decried in reply. Can you believe it? Yes, said the flashing lights, but we can't imagine why. Because I'm a latka, said the latka. The olive oil reminds us of the oil used to rededicate the temple following the defeat of Antiochus at the hands of the Maccabees. The oil was only supposed to last for one night, but there was a miracle and it lasted for eight. Plus frying makes my skin crispy and brown. So you're basically hash browns, said the flashing colored lights. Maybe you can be served alongside the Christmas ham. I'm not hash browns, cried the latka. I'm something completely different. Ah! The latka rounded the corner and found himself face to face with a candy cane, which wrinkled its red and white nose at the latka in distaste. I'm trying to sprinkle the night air with my peppermint scent, the candy cane said. Your mouth-watering smell, not to mention all that yelping, is spoiling the effect. My mouth-watering smell is part of the cozy feeling of Hanukkah, the latka replied. It reminds us that things are better now than they were in 175 BCE, when my people were not allowed to practice their religion. In order to study the Torah, they had to hide out in caves. And when they heard the Greek soldiers approaching, they pretended that they were gambling with a small spinning top called a dreidel. Sort of like Joseph and Mary hiding out in the manger, said the candy cane. Someone should write a carol about you. I'm not part of Christmas, cried the latka. It's a totally different thing. Ah! The screams of the latka grew quieter and quieter as the pancake ran out of the village and into the surrounding forest. Its utter fury was unabated, a phrase which here means the latka was still annoyed at the objects to whom it had spoken. But it was also quite tired. So it decided to rest for a few minutes beneath the branches of a little pine tree. The pine tree was napping, but woke up at the sound of an object plopping down at its feet. Are you a present? The pine tree asked. Presents are pretty much the only thing allowed to sit beneath me during this time of year. The latka sighed. Presents aren't really a big part of Hanukkah, it said in a voice hoarse from screaming. There's nothing wrong with giving gifts to loved ones, of course, but it's more important to light the candles for eight consecutive nights to commemorate the miracle in the temple and the miracle of victory when you are thoroughly outnumbered and you don't give up hope. 
plus Santa Claus, said the pine tree. The latka was too exhausted to scream. Santa Claus has nothing to do with it, the latka said. Christmas and Hanukkah are completely different things. Well, different things can often blend together, said the pine tree. Let me tell you a funny story about pagan rituals. But before the pine tree could begin this story, a family came trooping through the snow, searching the forest carefully. We shouldn't have waited until the last minute to get ready for the holiday, the father said, who was holding an ax. We'll never find a good one. You shouldn't give up hope, said the mother, and pointed to the pine tree. Look, it's perfect, said the daughter. Beautiful, agreed the son. Such a marvelous shape, said the mother. And its skin looks so crisp, said the father, who reached down and scooped up the latka from the snow. We'll need to reheat it, of course, but this will be perfect for Hanukkah dinner with the topping of applesauce or sour cream or even jam. I'll refry it in the oil, said the mother, to remind us of the rededication of the temple. And the triumph of the Maccabees over Antiochus, added the daughter. And hiding in the caves all that time, the son chimed in. The father smiled down at the latke in his mitten, and then he stared curiously at his other hand. What was I thinking, bringing an ax, he said to himself. The family strolled back to the village, walking past all the cottages with flashing colored lights and smiling politely at the candy canes until they reached their home. The family carried the latke into their own home, which was warm and cozy, and sat down at the table, which was lit with the flickering candles of a menorah or Hanukkiah, which is a branched candelabra designed specifically for the holiday. It's very frustrating not to be understood in this world. If you say one thing and keep being told that you mean something else, it can make you want to scream. But somewhere in the world, there is a place for all of us. Whether you are an electric form of decoration, a peppermint scented sweet, a source of timber, or a potato pancake. On a cold, snowy night, everyone and everything should be welcomed somewhere. And the latke was welcomed into a home full of people who understood what a latke is and how it fits into this particular holiday. And then they ate it.